In 2007, almost 60 years after the UN Declaration on Human Rights, the United Nations came up with another declaration, this one on the rights of indigenous peoples. There were four votes against New Zealand, Australia, the United States, and Canada. Now, a few weeks ago, Canada officially removed its objector status and uh, agreed to begin working to implement the declaration. To tell us more about indigenous rights, about truth and reconciliation, and also how you can be indigenous and Catholic at the same time, I am now joined by Sister Priscilla Solomon. She's an Ojibwe and a member of the Congregation of the Sisters of St. Joseph. Sister Priscilla, it's so good to have you with us. Thank you very much. So before we even start, maybe just to clarify terminology, uh, indigenous, aboriginal, First Nations, native, how do I refer to you? Indigenous is fine. Yes. I, uh, all four terms are in use, mm -hmm. but the one that probably is most inclusive and that identifies the people's who are, who's, who can trace their ancestry back to the land are indigenous peoples. Okay. So they're indigenous peoples all around the globe, mm -hmm. including here in Canada. Yeah. Aboriginal is a much more technical and legal term okay. that is, was used by our Canadian government to identify mm -hmm. the Inuit peoples, the First Nations peoples, and the Métis people. Okay, so oh, Aboriginal would include everybody, but y Indigenous isn't the okay terminology to use. I guess that's the terminology indigenous, that the United Nations indigenous is using. Indigenous includes, peoples. Yes. That's right. All peoples yes. who, are, who trace their ancestry back to the land. So right. I'm quite happy if you call me Indigenous. Okay. I think I personally most often use either Indigenous or Aboriginal because I've mm -hmm. become accustomed to both of those. Right. Now, you grew up Catholic, correct? Yes. Um, tell me a little bit about that and how you, because you were telling me earlier that you didn't even discover or your own indigenous roots until much later. So what was growing up like? Well, um, I would like before I say anything more to <laughs> share with you my spirit name because oh, that yes. is part of my indigenous culture. Yes. And so I introduce myself to to our Creator, to you, and to others as. And I add that my mother is of the Deer Clan. So what I shared with you is my spirit name is Ogimakwe. Uh -huh. It's the way that I am known by the Creator and known by the spirits. It's connected to the gifts that I have been given. And my um, clan is taken from my father, which is the Ojibwe tradition to take the father's clan. Uh -huh. My father is of the Bear Clan, uh -huh. but mother is equally important in the Indigenous family, and so I think it's very important to acknowledge my mother's clan, yes. even though I don't identify as carrying her clan. So is that like, like identifying yourself as, as the family that you come from? It identifies the, the broader, the clan is the broader family of relations yes. with peoples that are not blood family, uh -huh. but who have, who share the same gifts of a particular animal right. or right. usually a particular animal, a bird, a mm -hmm. fish within the Ojibwe tradition. And that particular clan, given the gifts of those animals, those birds, that clan carries the gifts. Right. So my father's clan is the bear clan, known for healing. The bear is known for its healing powers. Mm -hmm. It's known for its, its guardianship of its family. Yes. So those are so gifts that's your that clan. I Absolutely. That I so when you introduce yourself, you would introduce yourself not just with your name, but also with the My clan, spirit your, name your spirit name, the clan. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so then the question then, of course, now even more so, how can all that fit into this whole Catholic experience or tradition? I didn't know the indigenous tradition when I was a child. I was born into a, a Catholic family in a very Roman Catholic mm -hmm. community, mm -hmm. Killarney. Yeah. And... Uh, born at a time when the church was not focusing on enculturation. In fact, we were told that indigenous spirituality was pagan. Right. Uh, my, my grandparents, my parents were told, and I as a child was knew that 
we had to reject everything of our indigenous faith, our spirituality, our practices. Language even? Language. Really? We had to reject that in order to become Catholic. Right. Vatican II changed that mm -hmm. approach, called us back to a way of recognizing that the church needs to find expression in every culture. Right, of course. Not but reject you, cultures. But your parents had already gone through that. So when you were born and growing up, you didn't know anything about your own indigenous roots? I didn't know anything roots. about my indigenous roots. You were just Catholic in I was Killarney, Catholic. Northern Ontario. That's right. Good Irish, uh, Irish town, I guess, Killarney. That's where I grew up. And yes, we practiced Catholicism. Uh -huh. I experienced the faith in Jesus Christ as a great gift to me mm. and developed a relationship with Jesus that enabled me to hear the call to commit myself to right. religious life. Right. I only began the process of enculturating my own faith much later. Yeah. And it was experiences within my family that helped me to do that. Right, because your parents were also going through the same They discovery. were going through the discovery. My dad was rediscovering his indigenous roots and the culture and the teachings of the culture and experiencing some of the anger of indigenous peoples around what they had been taught by the Catholic right, Church. Right, right. And so... Now, were you already a sister? You I was already... already a sister. So what was, what's, going, what's happening inside of you as you're learning this, discovering this, going, seeing what your parents are, are going through? You're a Catholic sister. You've been taught that indigenous is pagan. Things are changing. Tell me a little bit about that. A lot was going on inside <laughs> of me. <laughs> Tell me a little bit I about that. <laughs> I was experiencing a lot of turmoil because I really believed the church, and I believed mm -hmm. uh, that um, Jesus was calling us to live in a particular way. And I was seeing my parents reject the church. I think okay. I held very, very deeply, if you're not Catholic, you're going to hell. Right. <laughs> and so I was in turmoil around that. And it was a long struggle for me, but eventually what helped me most was I began to really look at what my parents were doing. They were welcoming to their table people who were priests, who were clergy from other, other religion, other Christian denominations. Yeah. They were welcoming prisoners from hmm. ex-prisoners ex from directly coming from the prisons. Yeah. They were welcoming just all kinds of people, the broadest range of people. It was like Jesus welcoming all of the people yeah. that came into his life, yes. not turning them away. Right. They were reaching out and doing caring and kind and loving things for other people. Mm -hmm. They always had food to share at the table. They always responded to the call for help. Right. So I saw them living values that Jesus taught us, mm -hmm. and I thought, they're doing the right thing. God is guiding them. Uh -huh. And then once I began to learn the teachings of Vatican II, that uh, every people is called by the Creator yeah. and has a way back to the Creator, then I, I came to much greater peace. Did you find that maybe the, the, a lot of the spirituality or the beliefs are the same, just the language is different? Or did you even find commonalities in some of the language? Uh, between the, your traditional I did not have. I don't have the indigenous language. That was one of the okay. intergenerational losses for me. Right. And I have not managed to be mm. able to reclaim it. Yeah. Um, many, many people have. Yeah. Um, but it's been... Uh, I have not. So. I think that one of the, the questions that... Be, because I can understand culturally, and I want to ask you about enculturation in, in a little bit, but culturally it makes sense. So Catholicism can can even thrive within a particular culture. But, when, but, but if we look at native spirituality as a religion, and maybe you can correct me, then how are those two compatible? Or are we looking at native spirituality as not, not a religion? Does that make sense? Well, I think the question is more around what is religion and spirituality in Catholicism. Uh -huh, because okay. religion is structural. Yes. And spirituality yes. Yes. is the path that God gives us back to God. Uh -huh. And the structures of the church can facilitate that. Sometimes they don't facilitate <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 
the spirituality of indigenous people is the path that we have been given to return to the Creator. There are values and teachings in that mm -hmm. that have the, have the power, have the capacity to lead us back. Right. But there are also many that fit very closely right. with the values of the Christian faith. So um, to come to know Jesus as brother and as savior, as the Christian church teaches it, the Catholic church teaches it, is slightly different from what the indigenous peoples understand. We understand yes. as indigenous people a holy man, a good man, a brother, but not God made flesh right. among us. So well, that would be a very there are some clear similarities, distinction, there are though. some clear distinctions, but there are some strong similarities. But you're saying that the, 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 the indigenous spirituality can find its, its place within a, a particular religious structure, uh, being the Catholic Church in this case. Uh, given that the structure is willing to make some changes to allow the expression. <laughs> yes, well, but, but we have, and that's enculturation, right? That's right. And we see that sometimes, I've seen it, where instead of incense, you use uh, sweet grass or, or some other thing. So that's very similar. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the language or the singing might be different, but mm -hmm. it's neither here nor there. But in terms of the beliefs, I think there's a huge difference between seeing you know, the incarnation, God made, made man, God made flesh, and, and not believing that, right? Faith in Jesus Christ is a gift. It's yes. not given to everyone. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Okay, we're going to take a little break. Um, this is very interesting. I'm speaking with Sister Priscilla Solomon. She's a member of the congregations of, of, of the Sisters of St. Joseph. Um, we're going to take a little break. Don't go anywhere. When we come back, we'll talk uh, about the rights of indigenous peoples and also about truth and reconciliation. So stay tuned. I'm speaking with Sister Priscilla Solomon. She's an Ojibwe and also a member of the Congregation of the Sisters of St. Joseph. So maybe just to wrap up what we were talking uh, in the first half of the program, how would you define inculturation? What does that mean? Inculturation is the process of finding expression for the gospel within a culture, allowing the gospel of Jesus, the, the life of Jesus, mm -hmm. the life of the Spirit, to express itself through the culture, through the values, values and teachings of the culture. Okay. It's a process that only people within a given culture can do within their culture. Yeah. And I think we see it in other cultures. I've, I've actually had Ukrainians tell me that they experience a similar thing, but I think it's really it, obvious it we really experience it when we're talking about indigenous people or, 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 or native spirituality. You see the process of enculturation. What we also experience is the process of interculturation, which is how the enculturation uh -huh. within the indigenous communities is impacting and is impacted by the Catholic, Roman Catholic culture. Interesting. Culture now, the church. Yeah, the whole relationship between the church. I mean, you start off by saying that when you were growing up, when you were little, that you were being taught that you know you had to reject all of that. Um, now things have changed. Um, still that relationship between the church and some indigenous peoples, it's still, I mean, that's why we have the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. There's a whole history of residential schools. We don't have time right now to go totally into it, but we know your parents both went through the residential school system, even though you didn't. Um, you now work for the Faith and Justice Office, which is the Sisters of St. Joseph have a Faith and Justice Office. Tell me a little bit about that and the work that you do there. Well, I think I, I connect that as well with Vatican II in the mm -hmm. sense that uh, Vatican II called us, called religious congregations back to their roots uh -huh. and back to the gospel. And uh, when we went back to the roots of the Sisters of St. Joseph back in the 1650s, mm -hmm. we discovered that those first sisters were called to be women of prayer, women who shared their life together, who's, who responded to the needs that they saw in the city around them. Right. So at that time, the needs were for 
education and hospitals for the poor. So those right. were some of the very first ministries of the Sisters yeah. of St. Joseph. As time has gone on, as the Sisters of St. Joseph came to Canada, those were also primary needs in the province of Ontario, yeah. developing an educational system. And hospitals. So we worked yeah. with others in that and hospitals. But always our call is to respond to the needs of the time and to respond okay. out of the message of the gospel, out of the good news of the gospel. Mm -hmm. So it links faith with right. the response to the needs of the time, a response in justice. And it's not just justice in the sense of, of um, legal justice, but it's much more justice in the sense of, of um, expressing the mercy of God yeah. and the love of God in a way that those who are disadvantaged or right. needing uh, come to know God's yeah. love. Yeah. Now, you are an indigenous person, so obviously there's something in the work that you do with your office that also has to do with indigenous rights and justice when, for when indigenous the, people. One of the needs of today is the yeah. needs to address yeah. the uh, the calls to action from the Truth and Reconciliation yeah. Commission. The whole yeah. question of residential schools and the question of the relationship between Indigenous and non-Indigenous mm -hmm. people has been in the consciousness of Canadians, but also particularly the Church's justice issues for Indigenous people since the 60s. Right. With the, the Mackenzie Valley Pipeline was yeah. a big issue that they responded to. So. The current issue is the relationship between Indigenous and settler Canadians, yeah. and how do we yeah. reconcile that relationship? Right. And so, it's not it's not doing something different. I'm responding to that call yeah. to meet the needs yeah, in a way that our office can. And it, would you say that truth and reconciliation is is a response to that need as well, even though it's not your specific response? But I mean that's how we're trying to, we and, and in Australia and other places, also trying to respond to a great injustice that has been done. Yes. Is the, it a, The it, injustice that has come about through the process of colonization. Of colonization. Around the world. Yeah. And so, yes, we are all called to, uh, to explore the truth and to reconcile right. those relationships. Now, the Catholic Church... Uh, also has responded to the Truth and Reconciliation findings? Calls to action. Calls to action. Tell me about that. Well, there are a number of calls to action that are specifically directed to the churches. Okay. And it's those calls that um, the Catholic Church has recently responded to mm -hmm. through uh, the CCCB office, through the Justice and Peace Commission, Right. Of the CCCB office. So these are the, Canadian the leadership bishops. of religious yeah. congreg congregations and through development and peace. Okay. Those are all partners in a response to the call to action that asks the churches to um, articulate how they are going to put the, um, the declaration on the rights of indigenous people as a framework for reconciliation. Okay. So how are we going to take the principles and values of that declaration of this. and express that in our response to our need for reconciliation here? Okay, that makes sense, because I was going to ask you, so how, how does this relate? How does the Truth and Reconciliation Commission kind of bring this into play? But you just answered that. Mm. So, so the one of the calls to action is to implement this, in a yes, sense. Yes, yeah. And not just as a as a nation, because the government presumably is also going to try to. There are definitely this. calls to the governments to respond, yeah. both the federal, the provincial, the, the territorial governments. There are calls to churches. Reconciliation, I think, maybe I'm wrong, but implies apology. Are apologies necessary? Yes. Apologies have been made. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There may some, may be some yet to be made. I can't answer that. But I do know that when a person or persons offend another, it has an impact on their dignity, their sense of self-worth. That is a piece of the individual mm -hmm. harm that was done by the residential schools. 
that dignity is restored, restored when the one who offends has the courage to acknowledge yeah. their offense and yeah. say, I'm sorry. And so, it. yeah, that apologies are necessary, and yeah. apologies have been given, yes. and maybe others will be called for, yeah. but they right. are. An apology is very important. Yeah. Acceptance of the apology is also very important. And yes. But it can't be imposed any more than the apology can be apo- imposed. Right. So it's it's a kind of a dance. Mm-hmm. There's a responsibility to apologize for the harm has been done. There's a responsibility at some point to accept that apology. But if the pain has been too deep, then it may be a long time before right. the acceptance comes. Yeah, time. What, what do I mean? I'm a regular Catholic. I'm in a in a parish where there are no indigenous peoples that at least that I know of. Maybe they're there and I don't know that they're there. How how am I called to respond to to the truth and reconciliation, the calls to action, and even to this to to this declaration? I think a number of ways. One of the ways is definitely to um, educate yourself about. Mm-hmm. The Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous mm-hmm, Peoples. Mm-hmm. Read the, the Declaration, read the report of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, mm-hmm. or at least the findings of that commission. There's, right. I mean, mm-hmm. read the two declarations or the two responses that the Catholic, uh, the Catholic the bishops, Church has made, yeah. the bishops and the, and the heads of development and peace. Uh, they made it in the name of others, yeah. could not commit themselves force the commitment of others, mm-hmm. but they made it with the understanding, I think, with the hope and the expectation that we will read that response. We will find out what we are called to do. We're called to dialogue. Uh-huh. We're called to change some of the, uh, to change the lack of education about Indigenous issues into yeah. a greater awareness of Indigenous issues. Yes. I'm not educating myself. Right. So we need to develop an openness of spirit that says, there's a reason for this struggle coming back, for this information coming to us again and again and again. Yeah. So educate ourselves, dialogue with others, others about it, search out. There are indigenous people yeah. in this country. There mm. are indigenous, there are First Nations. Mm. At least look for the opportunity to dialogue. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Look for someone that you can talk to. Yes. Would you say that that is an adequate response to what we're called to do during this year of mercy? Uh, yes, I, I don't know if I'd use the word adequate. I, I think okay. it is a way in which we can respond to the call in this year mm-hmm. of mercy because the year of mercy calls us to, uh, to turn to God, mm-hmm. to ask for forgiveness for any failures that we've had. Mm. Well, yeah, our churches have failed in some ways. Our, we as Canadians have failed by being part of the process of colonization, being part of the residential schools. So we ask forgiveness of God for those mm-hmm. failures. We trust that God will give us the mercy and we make a choice to move forward together. Mm-hmm. So these two documents really give us eight different ways that we can move forward together. Yeah. And so. Let's find out about them. Yeah, for Look for sure. the documents on the CCCB website. Yeah, actually, we're going to put it on our website. Oh, good. Um, we're going to end there, sister. Thank you so much. We could spend all afternoon here talking, but maybe, maybe you just have to come back. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Yes. I really enjoyed this. Thank you. Thank you. Sister Priscilla Solomon is a uh, member of the Congregation of the Sisters of St. Joseph. She's also an Ojibwe, and I would tell you all the clans and everything, but... It's, it's in another language. Um, the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People, you can get this through Kairos, and uh, we're going to give you that website. And also, uh, if you go to saltandlighttv.org slash perspectives, we're going to put links to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, to the Catholic response, to, to the bishop's responses, and from Development and Peace as well, so that you just have to go to one place and find it all there. Um, if you have any questions or if you want to share your own story of enculturation, maybe you are an indigenous uh, Canadian who happens to be Catholic, write to us and share your story with us. You can email me, pedro, at saltandlighttv.org. You can also reach out to us via social media on Facebook or Twitter. Thank you so much for being with us, and may God continue to bless you and your home.